Welcome to another edition of the Arch Rival Roller Girls Rewind alongside Miguel Gorilla. My name's Mucky to Muck. Travel team season. We couldn't wait for it to get here. And in April at Midwest Sport Hockey, we finally got that first big home opener of the season for the travel squads, the St. Lunachicks and the arch rival All-Stars. Madison was in town. Boy, it was a fun doubleheader. Great doubleheader, Madison. Such a great team. They came down with great energy from both squads. Did you know... The arch rival roller girls have never lost an all-star bout at home. And Did they lose tonight? <laughs> Going to find out. Going to find out, and it was a fun one. Number 21 versus number 33 in the WFTDA, and both teams trending up the last right. couple of weeks. We saw arch rival with that first loss against Windy City, but we liked a lot of what we saw out of that contest, and we saw a lot of those things in this matchup against Madison. We felt an all-star team for arch rival that was kind of getting some confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, new team, new look, a lot of different skaters, new mix, and they needed that confidence, and they went to Wendy and they felt strong coming afterwards and they showed a lot of that tonight. They also showed some of the rust of a team that's really kind of trying to come together. Let's go to first half action. Arch Rival off a big streak of points to start this one off. They built up a 32 to 4 point lead. A host of jammers really getting some heavy minutes early on and this 8 point strike by Ida the Living Dead had made the score 32 to 4 8 minutes deep into this contest. Looked like blowout city. We thought it was going to be really ugly for Madison. Madison though so so tough and they're so mentally strong. We'll see how that goes. Ida, real solid night tonight as a jammer for Arch Rival. Arch Rival had built up a 73 to 44 lead at intermission, but Madison, to their credit, did not wave the white flag. And they went on a huge roll of points, including this, a 13 point strike by Jammer Magic Missile. This actually flipped the scoreboard with 1840 left to go in the bout. Madison went on top 102 to 93. This was part of a 58 to 20 run for the second in the start of the second half for Madison, and it completely changed the complexion of the bout. It was nip and tuck drama time. Madison extended their lead to 104 to 93. Arch rival kept climbing back, clawing closer and closer to that differential, and eventually they would go back on top on the scoreboard. Mighty Mighty Boston with this nine-point strike made the score 111 to 106 with about 13 minutes left. The calm, cool, and collected one. Mighty Mighty Boston, never flustered, always coming up when she needs to. Came up really, really big for Arch Rival in the second half. But the big eye opener for Arch Rival comes up in the penultimate jam as Brickyard races out in front, gets lead jam, scores four points, but a really risky call here by the bench. They continue this one rolling, and it pays off. Arch Rival would get a 23-8 strike from Brickyard that really blew the gates wide open. Real gutsy call here from Arch Rival this deep into a contest of against a very hot Madison squad. Like super gutsy. This was crazy and the crowd was going wild. It was complete trust by the coaches of the blocking schematic that was out there for our rival as well as the jammer. It completely changed it. Destroyed the time on the clock. The lead was insurmountable. No matter what happened in the last jam, you could see our rival was going to take on the win. That differential at halftime remained the same in the second half as both teams scored 98 points. Final score for Midwest Sport Hockey. Our rival improves to 14-0 here in Queenie Park with a 171-142 to victory over Madison, the number 33 squad in the WFTDA. Big, big output from all three jammers here tonight and everybody, a team effort. Ida the Living Dead, talk to us afterwards. I really liked the way we stayed calm on the bench despite like all the issues we were having. Everybody had a pretty good attitude, I think, and I really liked the way um, everybody, I gotta be honest, I love the like last minute heroics, so I think we, Got it together. A heart stopper again with Madison in town going down to the next to last jam here. Ida brings up a great point. Attitude is really going to play a big part in for this arch rival squad. As we said, you know, 50% of the skaters on this arch rival team are new or returning to this squad this year. So being in the right frame of mind, they're one and one right now. I think you got to be really, really positive about this squad heading into Cincinnati next week and uh, heading into Midwest Sport Hockey in May against No Coast. It's, it's still a work in progress. They're still coming together. And you saw a calmness and a coolness when they got down, when Madison stormed back to take the lead. They didn't overreact. They didn't panic. They kept together. And, boy, the courage on that second-to-last jam from the coaches to just tell the team, go out and win this bout right now. And they did it. Pretty impressive stuff to end the bout right there. Very, very impressive. Arch rival evens up their record at 1-1. One one. We talked about new faces for the All-Stars here at Midwest Sport Hockey, also online. 
new faces as well in 2014 for the St. Luna Chicks. Coming back at home, they dropped their first bout against Windy City. They could turn it around, but just as we saw in this first bout, the A bout with the All-Stars, MRD came prepared here tonight. They really did. What a great team. They look like they've even improved top to bottom as a league as far as I'm concerned. Uh, only one returning jammer for the Luna Chicks and many, many non-returning blockers. So this is a new Luna Chicks squad without a doubt. I would say even more turnover and even more of a challenging turnover for the Luna Chicks than the All-Stars. New faces of plenty as we take a look at first half action. One of the new faces on the St. Luna Chicks, Sleazy E, right off the get-go. First jam out, 19 points on the power jam. This added up to a nice roll of points for Arch Rival early on. They pulled out to a 22-0 lead, thanks in part to this 19-pointer. I called her KG all night long. She was KG all night long. She had a really nice bout. And you know what? This was a good confidence booster. I think it really helped her attitude-wise the rest of the bout. She was solid all night, and it looked like an early arch rival dominant bout. But Madison did come on back with a huge roll of points. They really stymied arch rival defensively. And with about 13 minutes left to go in the first period of play, we had ourselves a scoreboard flip after this four-pointer being notched by Gertrude Awakening. It was a 29-27 lead for MRD's B-Squad. Arch was stuck in the 20s for such a long time, and the Lunatics just couldn't get out of there. They really shut down every different jammer that Arch Rival sent out there, and they ended up taking the lead, and they held it for a long time. Halftime score, MRD on top, 65 to 47. Second half action now, and MRD coming right out of the gates. Huge points collected here by Sequin Destroyer. This would be a 15-point power jam. This extended the lead now to over 40 points. Well, it was like a mirror of the other bout that we saw with the All-Stars. The MRD comes out and just takes it to Arch Rival in the second half and really extended the lead with some really powerful jamming. MRD outscores ARG 83 to 54 in the second half. The B squad from Madison, Wisconsin scores the 148 to 101 victory over the St. Luna Chicks who dropped 2 0 and 2 on the season. But bright spark for this young squad. MVP blocker Jam Heiser Bush. Let's hear from her. First up, I think our jammers killed it tonight. I mean, they they use their offense when we had offense. Um, they worked with what they had, and they, I mean, they really, they won the, they, if we would have won this game, they would have been the reason why. I mean, they really killed it. The thing I like about Jam Heiser Bush's comments there, Gorilla, these Lunar Chicks, they know what they need to do to turn it around, and they have a chance to really get up a huge, huge roll heading into what's going to be a very competitive summer, and we have no coast here in a couple of weeks, but uh, I like how this team is trending up. Yeah, they're going to go on the road next week, and one week from today, a chance to improve against Cincinnati. They're going to play at Midwest Brouhaha. Mm -hmm. They're going to play here against No Coast. There's a lot of bouts coming. This is a developmental squad. It's a different mentality than the All-Star squad. This is a group of girls that is trying to grow and learn and push the All-Stars from under. And so that's part of the process. You see a girl like Jam Heiser Bush come out tonight and really show herself and really impress Madison. That's important to the developmental of the league. And I'll tell you what, Madison, a great league. Both wow. their squads did a yeah. great job here tonight. Very impressed by that league. Yeah, they're really fun. And they don't look like a team that's ranked in the 30s. They look no. like a little higher. And I mm -hmm. think they're going to surprise some people. And I think they're going to get some wins this year. They lost to a tough Jacksonville team yeah. that's really, really good. And they gave it to Arch Rival. And I think they're going to surprise some people the rest of the season. If you missed out on the action in April, shame on you. But you have a chance to turn it around Mother's Day weekend. The next time we're here at Midwest Sport Hockey, and what a great doubleheader it's going to be because it's the team that our rival has a chance to prove against as we will see no coast in town on Saturday night, May the 10th, right here at Midwest Sport Hockey. Keep in mind, a bout start first. So we will be underway with WFTDA a bout action at 630 right here at Midwest Sport Hockey. Last year, our rival at no coast suffered a three-point loss on the very final jam. They want to turn it around and keep that hot streak going here in Baldwin. No Coast is a big physical team, so that's going to be a real challenge for this squad that's a little more agile, a little more, a little more speed. It's going to be an interesting contrast. We will see if No Coast can break the streak at Midwest Sport. And, of course, B-team action as well with the St. Luna Chicks against No Coast B-team squad. Of course, you can purchase tickets right now by visiting the website. And once you do, you can purchase tickets $3 off in advance, if you get a group of 15 or more, you can knock $5 off each individual purchase. If you want to find out more about the Arch Rival Roller Girls, visit us at our official website. You can also visit our official Facebook page, or you can catch us via the tweet at ARRG. Gorilla, I know what I'm going to do for my mom. 
coming up this year for Mother's Day. I want to bring her to Midwest Sport Hockey and feature this great Arch Rival Roller Girls action, No Coast. It's going to be a fun doubleheader. It really is. I think this Arch Rival Roller Girl team is going to be good this year. They're going to be fun, and they're going to be interesting, and they're going to keep all these bouts exciting. Get out here and watch it. Why wouldn't you? It's going to be a lot of fun. Saturday night, May the 10th, No Coast in town, Arch Rival A and B. It's going to be a lot of fun. For Miguel Gorilla, my name's Muckety Muck. Thanks so much for watching The Rewind.